We have the shapedefs.lua file from the last video here in our project. And so I'm going to include that in here. And we're going to make a variable called physics data. And that's going to equal, and this is a syntax here that is a little bit different than we've seen before. Require shape defs. Remember, we don't put the dot lua in there. So now we have something called physics data that we can use, and it is the contents of that file. And the way we're going to make use of that is down in here where we add the physics body to the object. We're going to change this. We're going to go ahead and put in dynamic and then physics data, the thing that we grabbed before, get, and then the name of the object. In this case, it's going to be object underscore concatenate object name and this object name is the thing that we set right up here this should do it let's go ahead and try that actually let's do one more thing let's change the monkey and the monkey is going to be a static we don't want him pushed around by the objects and we're going to say he has a density of one friction of 0.5 so he's got a lot of friction the bounce doesn't really matter because he's static anyway. And then we are going to go radius equals 30. Now, what is radius? We haven't covered this before, except remember when we put the shape in here? Well, you can also put in a radius instead of a polygon shape. If you put radius in here, it actually makes a circle for the object. So let's go ahead and actually try that and see what happens. First of all, you can see all of our bounding boxes look really good. So we don't have those squares around everything. The monkey himself has a circle for a bounding box, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's just about right. It actually covers most of the monkey himself. Maybe we would want to pull it in just a little bit more. So let's say we have a radius of 25. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And look at all these things down here. These look awesome now. There is canteen, and you can see they're actually laying flat. They're hitting the way that they should. And just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and move the monkey down. So let's move him to screen right minus 30 and screen bottom minus 30. And then let's turn off the draw mode just so we don't have to see all those bounding rectangles, boxes, polygons. And let's give this a shot here. Okay, we got the monkey over there in the corner. Here comes our stuff. Looking pretty good. Bouncing, hitting the poor little monkey. Okay, this is pretty cool. Now, there is one thing that it's a little picky thing. Down here at the bottom, all the stuff is in front of the grass that we put in. So let's go in and fix that. And that happens here in spawn objects. Every time a new object is created, it comes to the front. But let's go ahead and take that grass and do a two front on it. So it'll just pull it to the front. Let's try that now and see what it looks like. Okay, look at that. That looks pretty cool. So now you've actually got grass in front of these things here, which gives it a little more depth. And there we've got these objects pretty much acting the way that they should. So that's a good start on our physics. And you've seen how to actually create the physics world and add physics bodies to the different objects and then mess with the bounding rectangles, polygons, circles, so that these things actually hit each other and act well. But there's another part of it, and that is collisions. Now, we can see that things are hitting, but there is a way to actually see what object is hitting another object, and that comes in really handy. So we're going to look at physics collision in the next video.